Hi guys, and welcome to another podcast on Boomland's new mobile game, Hunters on Chain. In today's episode, we'll talk about Web3, the evolution of the internet. What is Web1? What is Web2? How was Web3 born? What is Web3 and why was it needed? So even if you're not into blockchain technology like Bitcoin and NFTs, you've probably heard about Web3 or Web3.0. Your tech-savvy friends might be telling you it's the future, but the concept is a bit confusing. I is it the blockchain or cryptocurrency? Here's what you need to know. So let's talk about Web1.0 and 2.0, the internet as we know it. But let's back up. The first version of the internet that was publicly available to us, the World Wide Web, is referred to as Web 1.0, dating back to the early 90s. It was largely made up of static web pages connected by hyperlinks. Then came Web 2.0, the age of the internet as a platform. We saw the rise of e-commerce and social media sites like Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. People gained the ability to interact with online platforms and publish content of their own. Smartphones and cloud computing were major drivers of growth here. As many people see it, the problem now is that the internet users are required to surrender their personal data to use so-called free services provided by tech giants like Google, Microsoft or Amazon Shopping, social media, blogs, all of it collects information about our preferences and the way we use these services, which is then sold to third parties and used to serve up the targeted ads. Now let's talk about Web 3.0 or Web 3 as we know it. The term Web 3 was uh, coined by Gavin Wood, one of the co-founders of the Ethereum cryptocurrency as Web 3.0 in 2014. Since then, it's become a catch-all term for anything that has to do with the next generation of the internet being a decentralized digital infrastructure. Wood and those who support the Web3 concept claim that Web2.0 is controlled by big tech, which in turn to beholden to regulators who may or may not be effective at maintaining public trust in the internet or data security. In a 2021 interview with Wired, Wood said that the current web requires trust in the institutions that we can't hold accountable. Maybe companies tell the truth because they are scared that their reputation will take a big hit if they don't. But then, as we saw with some of the Snowden revelations, sometimes companies don't get an opportunity to tell the truth, Wood told Wired at that time. Sometimes security services can just install a box in their back office and they're told you don't need to look at the box. You're not allowed to say or do anything about this box. You just have to sit quietly. Prominence in Vision Web 3 as an internet that does not require us to hand over personal information to companies like Facebook and Google in order to use their services. The web would be powered by blockchain technology and artificial intelligence with all information published on the public ledger of blockchain. Similar to how cryptocurrency operates, everything would have to be verified by the network before being accepted. Online apps would be theoretically let people exchange information or currency without a middleman. A Web3 internet would also be permissionless, meaning anyone could use it without having to generate access, credentials, or get permission from a provider. Instead of being stored on servers as it is now, the data that makes up the internet would be stored on the network. Any changes to or movement of that data would be recorded on the blockchain, establishing a record that would be verified by the entire network. In theory, this prevents bad actors from misusing data while establishing a clear record of where it's going. Just as cryptocurrency 
Blockchains are built to prevent double spending. A blockchain-centric internet would, in theory, make it harder to manipulate and control data. Since data would be decentralized, no gatekeeper would have control of it, meaning they couldn't bar anyone's access to the internet. On paper, that would give a lot more people access to the internet than before. And and AI, artificial intelligence, would be employed to curtle bots and click farm websites. An example of a Web3 application might be a peer-to-peer -peer payment app that works on a blockchain. Instead of using a bank, people could pay for a good or service using a decentralized app, a DEP, made for payments. Before a transaction is finalized, it would have to be verified by the network and then coded into the digital ledger of the blockchain. A payment system like this could benefit people who can't open bank accounts, don't have access to, the, to them or are barred from providing certain services by large payment providers. Now, Web3 isn't there yet. Web3 is still largely theoretical and has a pretty steep learning curve. Currently, anyone who wants in has to educate themselves on blockchain and cryptocurrency technologies. That's a step not everyone wants to take just to use another version of what they already have, especially if they can use apps like private browsers to get around privacy concerns. Now there's also the issue of anonymity and censorship. If the entire internet ran on Web3 blockchain architecture and everything was indelibly written into the blockchain, nothing would be anonymous. That would be fine for some, but not those who need to remain anonymous for their safety. If no one could be blocked from the internet, that would be egalitarian in theory, but the spread of harmful misinformation and hate speech would need to be controlled in some way. Since the internet we have now is already so bad at controlling these issues, it's hard to say if Web3 would be better or worse. And of course, the biggest stepping stone is taking power away from tech giants like Amazon and Google. Meta doesn't want a decentralized internet, so if legislation doesn't rein in or dismantle these companies, the best Web3 has to offer will never come to pass. Web3 will also have to escape the barrage of crypto and NFT scams before it can be taken seriously. Yes, yeah, so that's a very interesting topic, guys, because it is confusing. If you're new to cryptocurrency and blockchain, you might have heard of Web3, what is Web3 and all of that. So we are going to make a web series about the Web3. Okay, so in next episode, I'll talk about the vision. How does Web3 work? The pillars of Web3. What is the idealism behind Web3? And what is it used for? And also the tech explained, you know, what is Web3 built on? How does the technology behind Web3 look like? And what does Web3 run on? So that is a very good um, uh, episode for next time because I'll also talk about the correlation between Web3 and crypto. Okay, so um, if you're new to the crypto world and cryptocurrency, it might be confusing and even complicated. So that's why we're making these Web3 ser uh, web series. Now, of course, we have a Twitter page. If you haven't follow followed us on Twitter yet, please do so. Also, Telegram group, please become a member. You will find all the social media links in the description, as well as our white paper on the website boomland.io. Guys, thank you so very much for listening today and uh, see you next time.